I decided to uh, call this talk uh, Macro Madness. Yeah. So, you know, fun with macros. So, a macro is, is a function who is designed to transform code from something to something else. You know, generally, one, one property of a macro, kind of what I think about it, is its arguments are code, and what it outputs are also code. So, here's a little example. Uh, I can. If I can find my mouse. Uh, let's say the representation for a point is x, y, just the, the two element list. Uh, I can do def macro point x to be, you know, uh, back quote, car, you know, comma to evaluate x. And, and now, uh, you know, when you write point x, you know, you know, it will get transformed into car, you know, at, at either compile time and then compiled, or if I'm evaluating this, it'll, it will, you know, kind of the classical definition of a macro is it, is it runs the function and then evaluates its result again. That should be uh, car of point, right? Huh? That should be car of point, right? Car of... Right. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Uh, so, you know, kind of this, this was some useful perspective of thinking about well, what you know, what do we use macros for? Well, one one case is where you know, it's kind of a simple case. You could have made a function, but it's too lightweight. I don't want the function call overhead. So you make it a macro and it just gets coded in line. Uh, you can do surrounding macros. Uh, let's say a good example is unwind protect. You know that you know that that surrounds your code and, and puts puts his own stuff in there. Uh, prof with profiling is is another good example of one. Uh, let's say I've got some of my own ones. Actually, one RC is a little macro that I wrote. Uh, you know that if you're running something in the interpreter, you know. But if if I write a loop that iterates a hundred thousand times, I don't want to wait for it. So I put RC in front of it, and it just takes that thing, compiles it, and runs it. Uh, so so that's kind of a surround sort of style. Um, there's another kind of aspect of things, which is low level, which is, I call it just syntax convenience. I wrote member equal instead of member colon test equal, or uh, I do with, you know, I have one with open output file, so I don't have to say direction output, uh, you know, and that provides the default, so I don't have to say if exists, uh, if, it, if it does if does not exist, uh, so it just kind of, kind of, you know, you can sweep your pet peeve little things into something that, that's a form uh, that's more convenient for you with open output file or string or T, you know, so I can I can do it to any of these things uh, You can fix you know things that you think of as unwieldy or verbose sort of constructs uh, So I have something called def class with init so you don't have to say you know You know for, for each instance variable, you know init form this init value this accessor this it, you know, it just does that for you uh, uh, a de destructuring let for example uh, you can then, uh, just like loop does, you, you know, you can bind a destructured set of uh, variables. Well, you know, this, this lets you do the same thing inside of let. Uh, I have another one, def macro with instance variables. It, it's like a let that binds all the instance variable slots just into locals, so you can deal with them as locals instead of having to do a slot accessor every time you do stuff. So there's, that's kind of large and small sort of syntax convenient things. But these are, that's the small potatoes. The big thing is really, you know, kind of the, the more global uses, uh, the more important ones, it gives you abstraction. It gives you language extension. I can build my own thing to look the way that I want on top of, on top of Lisp. Uh, and that, you know, with that, you make embedded languages. You can, you can define stuff to be whatever you look like, whatever, whatever you want. Uh, so it, it's, it's code building code. A really good example is the loop macro. You know, it's, it's almost like its own mini language, uh, which translates down to Lisp, so you can write in the way that, uh, in, in the way that, uh, that you want. So here's an example, and this is, this is kind of a macro. It's also kind of a Lisp versus the world sort of thing. Uh, and I'm going to use a Verilog, and I don't, know if you, I don't know if you can read all this. This, this is the definition of a simple little module. It's like a 144-bit flop. Uh, Here's an example in, uh, you know, this is an embedded language that, that you know, uh, I and other people wrote uh, that, that defines hardware. Uh, and it, it, it calls the loop macro inside of it for, uh, you know, actually it calls something which builds on the loop macro. You know, once you, uh, once you have this, you can build, you know, module generators on top of it. I counted kind of like seven layers of abstraction of uh, module generation. So now the madness part. What about if you want to 
make a macro to define macros. Uh, so let's say I could make a macro set f car because I don't want to write set f car. Uh, macro expand that to it macro expands to set f car, uh, and that works. But if I want to write a macro to do that for car, could or could all those things, you know, now there's a def macro which in its body has a def macro. <laughs> Okay, well this this can actually get very complicated and there's, some, there's something kind of all, all the way down toward the end where you wind up with something with a, you know, comma, quote, comma, you know, the, with, you know, with the nested things and it turns out we actually had code in our system that was like that. Uh, it was terrible code. Uh, fortunately, I did a grep of, the, grep of the system now and the only place I found that was in some, was in a piece of commented out old code. Uh, but kind of the, you know, but the, the interesting question is, here there are two back quotes and two commas, you know, which comma turns off which back quote? <laughs> and, and by the way, if you're writing code like this, you're doing it wrong. Just build a function, you know, that, that returns the code of the, of the inside stuff, separate them and, and, uh, and you'll be fine. But, uh, but anyway, this is fun with macros. Yeah. Do you have a best example of gratuitous use of macros? Because you do not approve. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I guess I. You know. We're about to change the name of the standard function. Yeah. That would. That would. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess I, I, I tend to think, you know, of course, you know, anything that you've written recently you think of as good code. Anything that you wrote 10 years ago you think of as bad code. Uh, it's been long enough that I've looked at bad code that I, that I, that I, can't, uh, that I can't find any. Um, but probably it, it's, it's more with how they're done than what they are. You know, in the examples that I can think of, this was, this was an example of how something was badly done. And I, and I thought, well, why is it that I don't have any of these in the system anymore? It's just like, oh, because that was the wrong way to do it. There's, there's, there. yeah. um, for the specific use case of uh, really lightweight functions that maybe just expand directly to car as mm -hmm. an example, um, I've uh, seen someone advocate um, that in that case, uh, what should happen is you define a function that is the wrapper and tell the compiler to inline it. Yeah. Or maybe have a compiler that, deduce, that deduces it is a good idea to inline right, it. Right, right. Or you, know, you can build list type def, def structs or you know, things like that. But, but in general, you know, that's, you know, that, was, that was kind of an easy example of something very lightweight. And you know, your definition of what's lightweight kind of depends on how performance critical your application is. It doesn't have to be that lightweight. I mean, like a, a, a two-dimensional you know, a, a two interpola interpolation in floating point is something that I made into a macro because I, I, I wanted it to, uh, first of all, not cons any floating point numbers and get out of a function and then return the value, which in turn did not get cons. Um, yeah. But e e so even something like that is lightweight. Yeah. Are all your macros hygienic? Are they what? Hygienic. Hygienic. Now, what does that mean? Yeah, you don't, they're not referencing variables. They're all, you know, everything's self-contained. You know, yeah. Um, yeah, I, yeah refer, ref, referencing random things in a macro is, you know, I suppose it's good if you're making a macro that's a random number generator, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd like to think so. <laughs> Where can I get that shirt? I just found it online. I think if you, you, you just Google this, uh, I think you, you might find it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks.